Welcome to the Fizzmas Show. It's officially episode one. I'm really looking forward to this particular one because I've got a good friend who's going to be joining me. A man who is no stranger to the world of football, to the world of sports, and a lot of people, I mean, we posted on social media, build up to this particular show, and a lot of people got excited, and they're like, geez, where's this guy been? He's my favorite player. There's a whole lot of different descriptions that were described uh, for this particular man, and his name is Stanton Lewis. Stanton? Hey, my friend. You've abandoned me, eh? No, no, no. Thanks What's going on, eh? Yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's yeah. been a while. Back in Joburg, so... Uh, you know, I, I get to see your face again. You know, you're handsome, eh? So <laughs> Stanton's a very yeah. handsome guy. <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> so, how's uh, things I'm going? I, I, so I, I saw you've, you've, you've just got a third uh, a third boy, I believe. You only make uh, make sons, eh? Yeah, no. You know, I don't have time for for any um, heartbreaks and, <laughs> and, and broken hey, women coming not, home. That's not a nice thing to say. No, nah, I think boys are much easier to handle. Yeah. So, uh, I'm happy with the three boys. And uh, and how's the wife doing? Doing well? Yeah, she's well. She's well. She's healthy, happy. Three babies, four men in the house now. Can look after. Now tell me, uh, are you planning on having any more kids, or is it? No, no, no. Uh, are, you, are you shutting the back door now? No, you, no, no. That's pushing it. That's pushing. Uh, no, it's first okay. of all, you must remember the school fees coming up. Eh? <laughs> so, <laughs> so before we get uh, any, how much is a pack of a pack of nappies these <laughs> days? <laughs> so you don't want to know, son. No, I, I know. know. I don't want to. You don't want to know. <laughs> You don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good, man. As long as everyone's healthy and in a good place. And uh, I mean, obviously, we have you on the show today. Um, I had so many things prepared, but unfortunately, uh, I did what uh, what Fiso always does. I forget. Yeah. Or, no, you prepared, can't say. You prepared you, and, you, you and Fiso in the same sentence is a... Are, know, are you throwing me under the bus on the platform right now? No, no. This I'm is not, my show, Stanton. Yeah, I know it's your show, but we're talking. We're talking. Guys, friends. just take a note. Don't way. have friends like Stanton <laughs> in this world. All right? No one likes honesty. <laughs> no one. <laughs> All right, my friend. So obviously, I mean, I wanna, today it's, a, it's, a, it's finding out a little bit more about you. I know a lot of people are, are interested in, 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 in you, um, the real you, um, you before football, you after football, um, you today. So I want to start right at the beginning, you know? Um, yeah. You know, I know your family is very sporty. So where did you start playing football? Who did you see playing football that, that really captured your imagination? Yeah, look, I grew up in, in Boston. It's not one of the, the best areas uh, to grow up in, especially what, 30 years ago. So growing up there, the only thing that, that kept me busy was, was school and, and football. Otherwise, you just mix with the wrong crowd. And I think uh, the best gift that my parents could have given me or bought for me was was a soccer ball and I, I just played with my brother uh, in the yard and from there I, I, I think I developed my own skills and I, I eventually joined the amateur club which was from the area and yeah played there for a few seasons um, and then uh, one of the coaches said that you know you're, you're really good you could you could uh, make it at a professional club if you are serious I mean, at, at that age, nine, ten years old, you're not serious about anything, yeah, to be honest. I mean, I mean, it, it, I'm trying to understand how you even register something like that. I mean, you just play. Yeah, look, the guy was good. He, he spotted a, a talent and he took me to a, you know, a, a proper club, which was Fitz University. And I think from there I, I developed, you know, season after season. And then the journey started uh, from Fitz. It was, it was a mission getting to the training grounds in the beginning, but... Yeah, my parents, they helped where they could and, and some coaches even had to come and pick me up. And yeah, that's that's the start of of uh, joining a professional club. It's one of the big challenges, isn't it, for four young players that are ambitious and want to go, you know, to play professionally. It's that sacrifice at the very beginning. And like you said, you know, getting to places sometimes can be difficult. And it's a challenge that's a reality for a lot of kids, especially from the townships as well. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, you need that support. You can't do it on your own. You're only 10, 11 years old. And I think uh, that's the gap that I'm working on right now, you know, after m football. But uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. Uh, you know, at, at 11, if your parents don't take you mm. or if there's no support um, structure, I, you, it's impossible for you to really go out there and make it yourself. So I think, you know, I, I always encourage the parents to take the kid to the training and and you know work on their passion and and their, their talent that they've been given. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, that that supports it. It 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 plays a massive part. Not only you I mean in sport, but also educationally. I mean, you've got young young boys yourself. You know, Sachu, how old is Sachu now? He's eleven he's years 11, old. Eleven. So he's right in the mix in terms of school and all those things. And that parental support, I guess, it's a massive part of of the kids growing up. Yeah, I think you know it, it's also a balance because a lot of people think that because I played football, my kids will play football mm, and they'll be good at it. Yeah. You're not guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, Nothing yeah. is guaranteed. And my wife keeps the balance in the house. She's the one that she will cracks do the whip. You mean she does not crack the whip? <laughs> <laughs> she so who cracks the whip? I crack the whip. Oh, okay. So I think, I think we have different roles. I think she's just trying to be macho here yeah, on, on this platform. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> my wife, she knows. She knows. <laughs> you know, there's some things that she's good at, and there's others that I'm good at. So, you know, the balance comes in where, educationally, she'll take care of mm. of everything with the boys. Sport wise, I'll I'll do it. And, you know, together we, we form a good team. I've got to defend Stanton now because, I mean, I'm obviously making fun of him with regards to cracking the whip, but I know his wife, she's very sweet. <laughs> I don't see her cracking the whip. No, you know, not She's just an innocent lady. She just always has a smile on her face. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to defend not you. Always. See, I'm a good friend. Not I'm not always. like you. Not always. See, I'm a, I'm a good friend. I'm not like you, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not like you. No, no, you're a good guy. You're a good guy, <laughs> Pisa. All right, so moving forward, yeah, let's, let's go back to football. I mean, obviously, you said you started at Blitz. Um, I don't know if the rumors are true that you also to, uh, ventured off to Ezemnyamagengani, Amapagania, the Orlando yeah. Pirates. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I went to to Pirates just before we left for the Danone Cup in France. So, so you played the Danone. I played in the Danone Cup. Yeah, the one we won. No. No, we ended so up third. So you were a loser that. Well. Okay, I'm, I'm joking. You know what? You can't <laughs> you can't win all the time, Pisa. You can't win all no, the time. No, hundred percent. I mean, but yeah. So I mean, uh, you obviously played with uh, for Pirates, and I mean, that must have been a great, a great um, time in your life as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, you asked me earlier, growing up, who did I, you know, see playing football? What what player really mm. captured me? I think it was Junaid Hartley at that time. He was at at Orlando Pirates, and Stanton Fredericks, who was at Chiefs. The reason I I, I, I s- use them is because they were tangible. You know, I could see them. Yes, I yes, see them around. Yes. I see them. They were from our area. Yes. And uh, the biggest influence was probably be Penny. Um, he was a guy I'd just seen on TV. Mm. And, mm. you know, the things he achieved and playing in Europe at that time, it really opened my eyes and, and, and made me believe that anything is possible. And so... And yeah. what a great guy as well. I mean, good work hard. No, and Stanton Fredericks. I mean, unfortunately, I don't know Junaid Hartley per- personally, but no. two incredible guys, the, the, those two I mentioned. Yeah, look, all three of them mm. really good, really achieved a lot. Um, back then, we didn't know that they would all be playing overseas. Mm. So, you know, I, I spotted the right guys and, and um, role models, you know. And, uh, yeah, today they they also successful in... in life after football yeah 100 percent. and let's move on now to ask cape town um i don't know when you got to 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 that particular destination but talk me through that journey then from the youth ranks um of playing for blitz playing for pirates and then moving towards an ask cape town team that is well known for for really developing um top class talent yeah you have to end it to the to the scouts because were you scouted i was, I was scouted yeah i was scouted while playing for southern gauteng we had a, a tournament, provincial tournament, and uh, one of the IX guys came to me. They approached me, they asked me, um, you know, wh- have I heard of IX before? So I was like, of course. It's, and uh, he then mentioned that he's a scout. They they really like my style of play. And um, would I be interested in coming down? If You know, immediately I said yes, without thinking, mm. you know, all the sacrifice that, that will follow. And yeah... They then took my contact details and my parents' details and they started contacting my parents. Obviously, I needed consent from from the, the elders. I mean, talk me through that moment, though. I mean, uh, you must have been a proud man or a proud youngster at that time to have Ajax Cape Town approach you and you were thinking, geez, is, is, this, is this for real? Yeah, no, it's, it's unbelievable because if you think of the amount of boys that play in mm. these tournaments and footballers all over South Africa... There are thousands, and to be scouted is 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 really special, uh, especially with IX being that European link. Mm. And uh, from the word go, I, I thought with IX it would be easier to get to Europe. Mm. And 
spoke to my dad and he was obviously um you know two minded because w- what is you know he'll he'll lose me but I'll gain in my football mm. or keep me there and my football kind of like mm. so we had to go through discussions go to trials I went over there I foot you know I, I was hand in the glove there and um yeah I, I I then made the move to to Cape Town when I was 13 years old wow that's that's a young age eh? yeah it's young no you know people don't realize it they don't realize that when you're 13 you're just hitting high school you're hitting puberty and there's so much going on so you know for for a youngster to move meet different people different accents different a laid-back lifestyle compared to this hustle and bustle in Joburg it was really difficult to to adapt in the beginning what do you say different different accents uh my bro. <laughs> my bro. They look good. <laughs> Salute, yeah. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love Cape Town. I, no, I love it. I love it. You know, in the beginning, it was it was a bit weird. You know, all the players yeah. asking for the ball and in a different way. So oh, okay. So, I mean, so you, was, I mean, you, you, you hear guys talking about language barriers. I mean, now you're thinking about slang barriers, you know? <laughs> yes. No, 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 no. There, I think, uh, I think slang is, is the mother tongue <laughs> in Cape Town. So... <laughs> Because I mean, you know the weird thing is like I, mean, I go down to Cape Town and people will be like, no, I can't speak Afrikaans, Afrikaans. I'm like, what do you mean? But what are you speaking? He's like, no, this is, this is yeah, Cape yeah. Town, Afrik-. and I'm like, well, so you get that savor of Afrikaans yeah. and then you get the slang, you know? Okay, okay. So I think it's, I don't think any footballer um, that I played with ever spoke uh, this savor yeah, Afrikaans. Yeah. They, they you know, I, I think I did. A, I don't know who I did an interview with once, and and, and someone asked. I think the guys at work asked for an Afrikaans version, you know. And I was like, listen, can you do an Afrikaans version? He's like, he's like, no, bro, I can't. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? He's like, no, I can't speak Afrikaans. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I, I, was, like, I was confused. I'm like, he's like, no, I'm like, but I heard you speaking. He's like, no, no, that's not Afrikaans. I'm like, okay. No, no, that's slang. That's okay. slang. It's totally different. I mean, you can't go into your office and, yeah. you know, start speaking slang. So. <laughs> and we can't, and, we, and yeah, we can't also utter some of the, the famous words. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> let's, no let's keep it clean. Huh? Let's keep it clean. You mustn't push it. No, 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 no. You mustn't push. <laughs> keep it clean, brother. No, 100%. I mean, and I mean, now obviously you get to Cape Town. Um, what do they do differently, you know, in the ADAX Cape Town that was able to, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're still producing players now, but there was a stage where it was just, you know, it was, um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a conveyor belt of talent. Yes, you know? yes. I have to agree with you at that that era it was geez every season there'll be two or three youngsters promoted and to the first players, team eh? they were proper players I think because they were there from a young age so when also you get the scout mm. that plays a big role then you play you get the, the coach uh, through the different youth stages and, and, and age groups then you get the player that has to adapt to all of it because not every coach is the same um, not every playing style, yes, 100%. you know, you have to learn different positions. And I think, uh, you know, finding finding the right players was was key. A player that could fit in to the IX system. Then teach them the basics. From the basics, you can then do more advanced training and, and so forth. So, you know, at that stage, uh, IX had too many good players. And a lot of them, unfortunately, would not come to the first team, mm. but would go on to other first teams in the country. I mean, it's a, it's 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 almost the blueprint that you think that a lot of clubs would follow. Um, but I mean, we, we know the 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 demands of, of professional football. It's to win, and some of the top teams, um, some of the Gauteng teams, not really known for their development because there's such a big demand to win. Yeah, look, <laughs> it's it's easy when you have when you're a big club. Uh, and you have a lot of money because you get the other teams, to the smaller teams, to do the work for mm. you. Uh, Ajax Cape Town will develop players. You'll come with the money. You'll offer them the money. You'll take their player. Mm. That player is a fully developed player and he can fit into your system. Also, you know, the, the mindset in, in Cape Town, I don't know if, if, you, if you've noticed, it's a win-win. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, it's almost like everybody comes from the Cape Flats and you want to get out. Yes, it's 100%. So... You know, when they come to Joburg, Durban, wherever it is, the players really perform mm. unless they are, you know, derailed by something. Yeah, yeah. distraction. Mm. 
Yeah, it's fascinating. I mean, I've, I've always asked myself, I mean, what did Ajax do differently in that time? Um, you know, how, how different were the coaches? I mean, I'm sure you've observed youth systems in, in other teams. Yeah, no, no, of course. So the difference is they have a European influence. Mm. That is the major difference because they focus on the youth. You're not talking about um, just any club overseas. You're talking about Ajax. Mm. If you've seen what Ajax did this season in the Champions League, and if you've seen how many players they've sold to Barcelona and mm. players that's on their way out to huge clubs, it's it's proof. It's proof that what they do in Holland with their youth is working. So why not transfer to Cape Town and do the same thing? Mm. Ajax Cape Town's youth, they do have a, a Dutch influence, obviously, and um, I think that's why that separates them from other clubs in in uh, in South Africa. Okay, hundred percent. I mean, we're gonna shift back to you now. Obviously, I mean, we look at look at that time where now you you grow up, you become a teenager, you sort of start getting to closer to the, towards the first team. Talk me through that transition from playing youth football to now. Now this is the real stuff. Jeez, yeah, that's it's scary and it happens so fast because a lot of a lot of the time you you kind of think there's there's this one guy in front of mm. you, there's this two guys. So only in two years time will I make it mm. I was only 17 when I got asked to train with the first team mm. I was only 15 playing in the Bale Cup which is under 19 mm. so I was always two or three years ahead of myself and that is what gave me the doubt or put the doubt in my mind mm. that I'm not ready yet I'm getting experience with the older guys but you know there was a, a inclined La Shabala mm. and, and Fundu Shumana for instance mm. they were much older and um you know, you, you, you're playing in, in this youth games and you don't know who's really watching mm. and what reports are being given yes, to the 100%. head coach until he arrives. So he came to one of the games. Uh, we played at Ikamva, the, the home base of, of the IX youth. And I had a great game. Mm. Straight after the game, he called me. He said to who me... Was, who was coaching at the time? Gordon Ingerson. Okay. So Gordon calls me and he says, look, I think you, you, you're ready to, to come and join the first team. Obviously, you're still a youngster. You you go get your experience mm. with with training matches, but we might consider you for selection if if you push yourself. And I think that was the change in my mind, mm. because after he spoke to me, I went home that night, and I I could just remember laying on my bed and and picturing myself playing mm. with the guys that yeah, I normally yeah. just watch. Or I, I was a ball boy yeah. in the stadium, mm. so now I'm gonna be you know passing and. And, and dribbling with these yeah, guys on yeah. the field, so you know, I, I put, I pictured myself as a as a player already, and I think that gave me the, the the you know that just that extra something that I needed to break into the f the first team much quicker than what I expected. Now you spoke of dreaming it when it became a reality. Talk first day of training, scared because <laughs> now now you're up against the real and big boys. Uh, you said you spoke. You played with Tlatla Shabala. Yes, Shaba, the crazy one. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> no I, play, I play. I uh, play five side soccer with him, and he's he's, Bogoto. he's nuts. No, no, <laughs> so no, no, no. I'm trying to understand <laughs> how he came into Can you imagine? Tackling. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine? So the guy tackling. Yeah. I mean, he probably no, was. a rock. He, Yes. <laughs> he was a solid midfielder, and you wouldn't pull out of tackles mm. for anything. So, I think, um, you know, having him around was also was was good. Because he toughened you up, mm. he, he other players would take it easy on you because you're a youngster. Mm. But I don't think that's the way to go. You need to be hit with the reality from day mm. one. And I think training with the first team and getting to to experience that for I think it was a month or two before I made my debut was was phenomenal. I mean, you can't you can't really explain it because every day there's something new. You're learning. It's a new coach. You now go into camps. You, mm. you know, it's it. It was just things just happened so quick that, uh, you know, you you can't even remember what what happened. And next thing you open your eyes and you in FNB Stadium making your debut against Chiefs. Wow, crazy. Wow, jeez. I mean, that's that's a massive stage. FNB Stadium, the national stadium against the biggest team arguably in the country. I yeah. Mean, Look, I wasn't expecting to play. I travelled with the team. Uh, Nathan Porter got injured. The first sub came. He, he, he told the 
think two of us to warm up and uh, I think he had to make a call quick because Nathan couldn't uh, mm. return to the field and he called me that time you know <laughs> the crowd <laughs> him this this <laughs> what 30,000 people mm. in the stadium you, you are unknown nobody knows it's live on television yeah. your family's in the stands mm. um, and you're on the sideline your number comes up and you you're ready to run onto the field unbelievable feeling it from that day your life changes mm. forever mm. and i mean you've essentially you've come full circle i mean you, you, you throughout the you've grown up playing in johannesburg as a youngster and you come back and you make a professional debut at home essentially yeah that's something special because then you know also my family could come in mm. and come support at the stadium but they were not sure if i'm going to play or not mm. and right in the beginning again goes back to the family support mm. whether you in in the youth of of a club or whether you're making your debut mm. because that's something that will stick with you forever so yeah coming back and making my debut against a team that i would like to play for is unbelievable you know what i'm thinking about i'm thinking about yeah, if i'm 17 and I make a professional debut. I'm thinking about the girls. I'm thinking my about. Friends. I'm thinking about the, my friends. Everyone's. I'm. I'm uh, like it's the last one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, of course you feel that way. Yeah. You feel that way. There's, yeah. there's so much that comes along with with uh, football. You you make your debut. I hit a post. I remember against against Chiefs. I had a good game. After that day, everybody started talking. Mm. Who's this new guy? Mm. Who's this new kid on the block? Where does he come from? Because, I mean, in South Africa, I mean, maybe maybe then, maybe, you know, maybe then it, in terms of there was more young players kind of coming through. But if you're 17, 18, today, it's, it's, it's almost like, yeah, who's this guy? Because, I mean, we still consider youngsters at 22 sometimes. Now, at 18, it's like you're a phenom, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. So, I think that's why um, players are only making their debuts at 25, mm. 26 in the PSL. Um, Ajax was not afraid to, to play players that they thought was ready. And I think a few youngsters uh, in the spa season in the PSL did make a debut in the teens. Mm. It comes with a lot of pressure, comes with a lot of responsibility as well. And then, like you said, all the distractions that might arise because your friends from school mm. want to be closer now. Mm. Because now we go and to the, the people that aren't with even your friends. No, 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 like, no, oh, no, okay, no. Stanton's Trust me, you, you, you have a thousand mm. friends in the by by the next day mm. uh, if they just see you on TV so it's also b being clever knowing what's real and what's not real but that's a maturity thing I mean not everyone can can have that maturity at 17 18 some guys immediately just get caught up in that whole storm and it doesn't last very long no it doesn't I think in the beginning I was obviously caught up in that in that uh, whole you know limelight as well where friends came out of nowhere, people inviting you to places that you never knew mm. existed. And, you know, for me, um, at that time, football was the only thing that I knew. Mm. So, you know, going to friends and a house party, and there, that was okay. But never going mm. to nightclubs and mm. all of that stuff. No. Yeah, no, 100%. And I mean, no doubt an exciting time for you. And I mean, you spoke about things really speeding up uh, in your career. It was only a few years later, or was it a year later? I don't know, but you transitioned then to... I mean, I want to find out about the AX Amsterdam North. Now you've, you've had a taste of the PSL. and Actually, before we do that, you know, youth international, you know? I know you, you, you would have played with guys like Kune, Sandra May, you were, uh, junior internationals. Was that before or after you went overseas? That was before. Before, so, okay. So I was one of the youngest players in the Olympic team. Um, I think... Yeah, I was still 17 at the time when Compella called me up mm -hmm. and uh, I had a, you know, I had, I had a, a great time with the under-23s. I think I skipped under-20s, under-17s mm -hmm. and I went straight to the, it, at that time it was called Amaglugluk. Amag I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we had a powerful team. Mm. We had a team that could compete and yeah, we, we went to qualifiers and I mean, bro, like I just said, everything that, that happened, happened so quick. Mm. because you just made your debut now now you called up for the national team mm. you don't know what's that about mm. you don't you, i've never been before and um you getting you know uh, called up for for the under 23s to compete in 
in Olympic qualifiers. I don't know if I was ready at 17, but throughout the years uh, that I played there and obviously later stage Fafana, it was, you know, it was just a, a stepping stone for, mm. for my career. 100%. And uh, you then moved to AX Amsterdam. Um, how did that come about? And a lot of the guys I know from AX Cape Town, Klaus, etc., etc. Same for you? Yeah, look, um, I had a good, a good season with the first team. Um, and there was talks. So now when there's a new talent on the block, everybody's talking and Ajax is the first mm. guys to come and really Have watch. Look, yeah. Yes. So I think they seen myself and Granul Scott. We got invited to to play in a tournament over there in the youth structures. Right. Um, it's called the Copa Amsterdam. And I think I finished joint top scorer with, with a guy from Argentina, from Boca Juniors. After that, I had agents, I had clubs, and you know <laughs> the choice was mine it was it was it was that quick because you have rob moore who's a south african big agent mino raiola wow. i have his his contract at my house shakswar so it's it's players that manage slatans mm. pogbas huge agents that come in and then you you basically sitting down and having to choose who you want mm. to manage your your affairs that's and huge. so Ajax liked what they seen along with other clubs. Mm. Ajax was first preference, obviously, because I come from there and I yes. know their style. And um, yeah, I actually signed I signed the deal after my second um, time out there. I went the first time to play in the, in the tournament. Mm. They invited me again and I joined the, it's called Young Ajax, which yes. is, uh, you know, a, a mixture of the first team and the best youth players mm. that Ajax has. Mm. S- they liked me. We started negotiating. I flew back, back to South Africa and the two clubs then had to negotiate. Ajax Cape Town agreed that I could leave for Ajax Amsterdam and then it was personal affairs. Mm. I agreed and the deal was sealed one year later. Wow, that's huge. And out of interest, I mean, which football teams, which other teams were out there? I'm looking at you. Yeah, there was Porto, which was a Portuguese team uh, that was competing also in, in the tournament. Um, there were talks of Dortmund. And those were the three clubs that, that I think my agent told me about. And But my mind was set on, on Ajax and, you know, playing for Ajax Amsterdam. That was my, my goal. And which agent did you eventually go? So I signed with Rob Moore. He got Pinar to call me. He got Aaron <laughs> Nkwena. Yeah. So he was. He had all the South African players call me and obviously talk to me because I I wouldn't just sign with mm. anybody. And while in negotiations, I was still only seventeen. So um, my dad had to be called club owner. Mm. Uh, John Comitis at the time was called in. And we had this meeting and eventually it made sense to go with, with Rob Moore. Um, he's a South African, he knew the South African culture yeah. and he's been in Europe for, for years. Mm. So I signed with, with uh, Rob Moore. Okay, fantastic. That. I mean, let's speak about your time there now. I mean, oh, I can only imagine now, you mean, you big smile at your face like the black dog yes, you have right. now. <laughs> I'm sure you're just thinking back yeah. and you're like, you know, big big eyes, and you're thinking, sure. No, you, it, you know what the thing is. Yeah. We, you know when you make it in South Africa. Yeah. You make it big in your city. Yeah. Which was Cape Town. And then in Cape Town, we have pirate supporters. Mm. We have chief supporters. Yeah. We have super sports supporters. Mm. In Amsterdam, mm. if you're foreign and you sign for for Ajax, mm. that whole city. Amsterdam will know who you are, mm. especially because you come from Africa or South yeah, America. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, th- I remember being introduced to the city um, as as one of their new players for wow. for the season, and that was unbelievable. Because from that day, your life then has changed 
and has gone up another level. again. Again, <laughs> again. You thought you made it and seen it all. Yeah. You have not. You have not. You have not in terms of you know financially and yes, yes, yes. Um, with with the the fame, if that's what you want to call it. So yeah, signing there was amazing. Ah, you're a superstar, boy. Yeah? No, I'm here. I'm around. here. I was, I was walking <laughs> around there, you know, <laughs> taking Pilar's place there. It was crazy. It yeah. was crazy. And I mean, was he there when you when you arrived? He, I was there while he was. Well, I was on trial mm. while training with the team, and he was still there. Mm. And when I signed and returned to the club, he had been sold to Dortmund. Okay. So we managed by the same agent. So, you know, it it made sense to bring a player in, um, in a number ten position. Mm. And and uh, Pinar f- went to to Dortmund, and I was supposedly, uh, you know, there I to take his place. I'm so happy you mentioned that. It is part of the things that I wanted to ask you about a little bit later on. But because you touched on it now. What position did you actually play? Because a lot of people just categorize players and say, oh, he's a striker. You know, they don't, what about, what about the, the attacking midfielders, tens, you know, th- yeah. those are specialist positions. What were you? So I went down as a number 10. Mm-hmm. Um, that's obviously just behind the strikers and the most creative position on the field, I think. We then had, a, that's why I said also, the IX system, they teach you how to play in different positions different systems and I it I was it does it come from that total football philosophy it does. from, from it the does. hand crave. it does so you start I, I was a number 10 I played at the number 9 as a top striker and I played as a holding midfielder if you look at it it's it's one line mm. it's the 9 it's, it's basically the spine of the team and I could play in all positions which was crazy I never knew because I didn't do it at Ajax mm. but it just shows what what Ajax Amsterdam sees in young players. If I give you a quick, you know, example is De Ligt. Mm. Um, great defender. He's a fantastic 19-year-old defender. Mm. But he could not play in the youth systems. He could not play uh, the football that Ajax wanted. He mm. was tough. He could win balls. But, with his, you know, with the ball at his feet, mm. he wasn't the best. They moved him to a centre mid and they played him as a centre mid so that he could get that 360 view mm. of the game. They then moved him back, and now he's a superstar. Wow. That is the difference. And I think that's what Ajax Amsterdam did with, with myself as well. And interesting that in, in that subject, I mean, I've always found it fascinating how the, the total football philosophy works. And a lot of people, will you'll hear them say total football, and they think it's just passing the ball around, or it's this, and from what I understand, it's almost that interchanging of, of, of positions as such. So it's almost being able to play in all positions and being comfortable enough to play in those positions. Am I right? Or tell me about that education. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Look, it's it's total football is, is the basics. You cannot do stepovers if you don't know how to cross a ball. Mm. Um, you know, you, 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 you cannot shoot if you don't have a first touch. Mm. Because without a first touch, how are you going to set yourself up to mm. shoot? And um, these are essential little small things that I ex- really, um, they, they, they focus on a lot. In terms of positions, if you have a, a left winger taking a corner, who's covering for that left mm. wing? And do you know what to do in that position? Mm. And that is where that interchange of positions comes in. And players know what to do mm. in those positions. So total football is exactly that is knowing the the full field if you are not being lost certain essentially position, yes you never lost because you know exactly what to do in the position you find yourself in fascinating fascinating and, that, and that's the sort Crazy. of that's that, that's the sort of small things that you know you know i, I always find it puzzling when you hear f- a football says ah but i can't play that right back what do you mean it's football yeah, <laughs> you look, know, look, it might not be your strength, but at you, you should like be that. able to to you do should a know job, the rules. You know, hundred percent. So I, I think uh, you know that's that's something that we need to work on in this country, and mm. that's what I've I've uh, focused on is is just the basics and knowing what to do when you are in certain positions on the field. Hundred percent, and uh, I know your time at Ajax. I mean, you come across guys that went on to become really massive names you played with them in, in, in young Ajax and yeah who are those I mean yeah look I, I know them, it's a thin I, line yeah it's a thin line I just did an interview with one of the magazines in South Africa mm. 
it's a thin line between a superstar and being myself, mm. Stanton Lewis. Because your luck at that time, mm. your your coach at that time, mm. your your form at the time is just so key. And sometimes it's not meant for you. You reach a certain level and you you think that a daily blunt, you asked me earlier, who was a friend of mine, a daily blunt, for instance. In the youth or, or in young age, yes, he was good, but you didn't think you'd be at Man United. Come on. <laughs> I was taking him on. Like, you know, he was, he, <laughs> he, was, was like, he was the N1 for me, you know. <laughs> and I come to a Chiefs and he goes to a United. Mm. That's the difference. And in football, very unpredictable. I mean, they signed Suarez. Didn't know who he was. Thought, okay, yeah, it's another guy. We just did Dutch lessons together. Oh, was it? Did he come at during the time? That yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were like you and I are sitting now. That was my <laughs> my guy next to me, and obviously sign language. He couldn't yeah. speak Dutch. I don't think he or, he still can't English. speak English. <laughs> 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 yeah. So so yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Wesley Schneider was at number ten. Um, Ryan Barber. I still talk to him a lot. You know, you form these relationships with players that. You know, I'm not friends with them because they are now mm, at, at um, Tottenham and PSG. But bef in the youth days, we formed some kind of friendship. And over the years, we just kept, you know, in contact with mm. each other. And so, yeah, there's, there's uh, quite a few players from from my era that, that has now gone to huge clubs. Huge clubs. Mm. And the line, like I said, is so thin. And I mean, you speak of luck. Um, I know during your time there, you suffered a very bad injury that would have set you back immensely. I mean, talk me through that. I mean, such a crucial part in your development as a footballer. And then you have an injury of that nature. What was that injury and how badly did it hit you? Yeah, look, it was patella tendonitis. So I'm an knee. Okay, that's in the knee. Okay, sorry, sorry. Come on, man. So it's the... Wait, wait. Patella tendonitis. Yes. I don't want to yes. use that. Heavenly. What's wrong with that? <laughs> patella tendonitis. No, 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 no. A lot of players, <laughs> <laughs> if you go back to the yeah. car season, yeah. they'll say, no, I retired. I said, why? No, I got injured. They don't know what injury they had. <laughs> There's only two injuries that could really keep you out of yeah. football. And patella tendonitis was one of them. You know, it was almost the end of my career at 23. Mm. Um, fighting back into the team and all of a sudden I get this pains in my knee and go for x-rays in Holland and they're checking it out. They said no rest. They started doing the, I don't know what the treatment is called, but they, they basically draw blood. Mm. They spin your blood and they inject it back into mm. the injured area. And it didn't work. At that time it was, I think I had two years, 18 months left on my, mm. on my Amsterdam contract. And I decided to come home and do my op here. Um, because during that year, my son was born. So not being married and yeah, yeah. the wife couldn't bring or the girlfriend couldn't bring the, the boy over. I then decided to, to take a loan deal back to Cape Town and recover here. And obviously uh, the worst thing that could happen to a footballer. Look, it's not the worst thing. Um, after a while, and you know, I went to mm. uh, psychologists and all of that, they, they kind of help you because you either go, when you don't make it in, in sport, it's it's two routes. Mm. It's your lifestyle route, which is alcohol abuse, drug abuse, fame, woman, or you get injured. And I'd rather go out the honest way than, you mm. know, cheat myself. Mm. And yeah, unfortunately, that was that was the start of, of my, my uh, injuries. Yeah. I mean... I can just imagine, you know, the, the pain you would go through in that time in terms of this is what I've always done. Um, will, I, will I come back the same? You know, I'm sure all those questions go, go on through your head. Yeah, look, it's, it's difficult because you don't know. You don't know what the outcome of an up will be. You don't know if you'll be able to play again. And the risk for, for clubs, because now you're on huge money, you're on mm. huge salaries. Are they going to take the risk and sign a player that is... Uh, that just came back from an, an op. The only way was to, to, to do the op, um, do the rehab, come back. Um, I was at, on loan to, to IX Cape Town anyway. So the only choice I had was to fight my way back into fitness and, and, and into the team. 
which I managed to do. The operation was successful. And geez, again, close my eyes, wake wake up one day, I'm back on the field. Mm. I'm scoring goals while it's Cape Town and now this club's talking again. That, you know, wants mm. a, a piece of, of me. And I mean, it's, it's also probably a, approaching uh, at the time was, was also the 2010 World Cup. And you would have had your eye on that thinking, oh, World Cup at home, you know, on the biggest stage. I mean, no greater, no greater um, honor. Yeah, no, of course. One of the reasons, obviously, when, when you sign with an agent, you have, you have this whole team behind you. Mm. And uh, they advised me, look, if you go and you, you have a good season, the World Cup is there. Mm. I was already part of the, the, the talks of being in, in, the, in the front line there. Mm. And it was 2009 that I got injured and I had to do the op because I thought with all the other medical, you know, um, whatever treatments I went for, it would work mm. and I'd be fit enough to, to compete. It wasn't. It was too late. Did the op and throughout the World Cup, I think I went to the, all the Dutch games yeah. um, because, you know, I still contracted to, to yes, Ajax yes. Amsterdam. I used to fly up and down. And all the players, some players that I played with, which is a shame because I would have loved to compete in the same tournament as yeah, them. Yeah. They were there. And I think just, you know, some of the guys like Ryan Babel and, and, and Van der Ville, they would just say, come and fetch the tickets, come to the games, mm. come to the hotel afterwards, fly everywhere and just mm. enjoy the, yeah. the occasion. But it was sad to miss out. Mm. Obviously, if you had the, the chance. Uh, ash, ash, I'm, <laughs> yo, I'm thinking if I'm you in that situation, the World Cup at home, man, it's, it's like I can taste it, you man, know? I man, can taste it. It was one of the best World Cups. Mm. If you think about it, no one thought that we'd pull it off, mm. to be honest. And, and it, was, it was unbelievable. Proud of the team, they did well. Personally, you know, obviously you, but you said, but I'm not bitter about it. Ironically, when we were speaking about the World Cup it, and a few days ago, it was, it was the, it was the anniversary of that strike from from Spiro Shavalala. Yeah, I've seen it. I seen I, it. I'll tell you. I mean, during that World Cup, I was working at a, at a fan park. I was pouring beers. I don't think I watched the game at the World Cup. <laughs> I was like, I'm so upset when I think about it now. But I remember that moment. I was pouring someone a beer and I just saw all the beers just going up in the air. Everyone just lost their minds. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I just imagine what it was like at the stadium. And I mean, where were you when that happened? Yeah, I think I was home. I was home watching the game on, on TV. And um, I was living in Cape Town at the time. And they played at FNB mm. Stadium. And I mean, Shaba, what a goal. Just he nailed it. What a goal. <laughs> what a goal. Great way to, to open the World Cup. And great for South Africa. I mean, people talk about that goal all over the world. And, mm. um, you know, it's, it's great. He's a good player. A few years later, I didn't know I'd be playing with him. But, yeah, it was, it was just amazing to see. 100%. And, I mean, you speak about playing with him. Um, obviously, then, let's speak about... Your time at Ajax, you eventually get back to Fort Cupcus, you're doing well. Um, what happened then in, in terms of then you going to Chiefs? Talk me through that period. So that was that was basically the first comeback. It was a comeback season for me for I mean, after eighteen months out, coming back now, I then signed for, for Ajax Cape Town because I don't I don't think they wanted to really lose me completely. Mm. Um Ajax Amsterdam yeah. after my contract had expired. So I stayed on at Ajax Cape Town. They had a Dutch coach, it was brilliant, uh, for Podan. Mm. And he gave me a chance to come back. I then came back, scored goals, took them through to the cup. We lost in the final against Chiefs in Durban. And immediately after the game, I remember Jose Torrelba was leaving. Yes. And the coach came over to me and asked me, you know, what, what are my plans? My plan was obviously to go back to Europe. Realistically, you know, what, what is in front of me right now? Nothing. Mm. So I, I explained to him, and this is after the game, after we lost the final. Yeah. Um, he said, we'll talk. I'll get in contact with you, and I want I can see you at my team mm. next year. 
who was coaching at that time? Uh, Vivi. Ah, Vladimir Vivi. Yes. So he was over here, and, yeah. and yeah, he was he was a good coach, and obviously a European coach. Mm. So it, it was nice because um, he understood, the, you know, the the, the European basics mm. and African flair. Mm. Together, you yeah. have a kind of complete player. Mm. And then yeah, I, I went. Uh, we had, we negotiated for a while, and eventually the deal went through, and I was at Chiefs now. Now the whole now it's <laughs> back to Joburg where yeah. everything started and it's crazy. It's a team I made my debut against years um, bef- before this moment. So you know, just what an honor to to be in that setup. Great club, big club. Um, <laughs> at the time, the form was good. You know, they didn't they <laughs> died, so we <laughs> talked straight. <here. laughs> You know, so the, it was. We're going to get they, to that. Yeah, they were, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they, they, they were, a, they are still a big club, and at that time, uh, they had players that was on form like Knowledge mm-hmm. Musona and Shaba was there. Yeah, yeah, it was a great mixture of, of players, and I enjoyed myself. It really, I, I learned, you know, the 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 meaning of playing for one of the biggest clubs in South Africa and not just overseas. Now. Your time at Chiefs, I mean, you can look back at it and maybe describe it to us in terms of obviously playing wise um, and why you then didn't stay on longer. Yeah, so this is where we, the comeback season was completed. I was then just in a new team trying to fit in with a new coach, a new philosophy, new club surroundings. And it went well. I never missed one game. I was not out of the team. Mm. I think I was sick when we got to Durban once. But I was in the 18-man squad um, every time we, we, we were to play. Mm. And played, I scored a few goals for them. Um, I had a good, you know, I had good games for them. It wasn't my best. But they obviously, you know, they, the quality was, was there. The, the performances I gave was up to scratch. Came to the end of the season and... Before the season ended, Bobby started talking to me about renewing my deal. My goal was really to go back to Europe. Mm. Um, but there was, I think there was hardly anything on the cards. There was a team in, in, in Norway. Um, not in Norway, in Sweden. In Sweden, yeah. Uh, Duke Garden. And then there was Nonchalant in, in Denmark. And my agent at the time had contacts over there. I was not sure what to do because... Now Bobby's talking directly to me mm. and my agent is talking about other clubs. Mm. Eventually we spoke and um, negotiations between Bobby and, and Rob Moore broke down after they couldn't agree on a two-year deal for me. Now, for me, I would have signed. If it was a two-year deal and it's at Chiefs, in my mind, I would have put pen to paper. I don't know what happened. Because it was the deal was not transparent with uh, you know the three of us, yes, Bobby, uh, myself, and and Rob Moore. Um, I then the the European interest was kind of you know half heartedly, and I then signed for Amazulu. Time was running out. I needed a club to go to. I trained with Super Sports for a while just to keep fit, and then Amazulu sent the offer through, and I signed for. Uh, Amazulu. Okay. Moved to Durban now. Very different. Yes. My hometown. That's where I actually met you. Yes. In, in Durban, eh? Yes. yes. Uh, and, wow, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking now, you go from Chiefs to Amazulu. A lot of players, actually, they think to themselves, ah, if once I'm a Chiefs, ah, I don't want to go down to, to play for Amazulu. Or you look down on other clubs, or you, you, you almost want to stay in that, that top bracket, you know, that top yeah. four type, type, of, type of setup. Same sentiments for you or for you, was it just a case of I need to go somewhere where I can play? Look, I just wanted to go somewhere where I could play. If you look at it, it would be stupid of me to say I don't want to go to Amazulu um, because I come from Chiefs. Don't forget, I came from Ajax Amsterdam. Mm. That's world champions. How can I not want to go to Amazulu? Mm. They offered me a good contract. Um, It was a one-year contract and they understood what I wanted to achieve. Um, I played there, scored goals, and great performances for Amazulu. 
lasted eight months and then I was on my way again. But yeah, that's uh, that's the way football is. Um, and I wouldn't say it was a mistake. I think it was good. I got game time, got to live in, an, in a, another city, um, met some people, met, you know, future business partners uh, that we mentioned that we... Yeah, we mentioned so off air. We went to yeah, yeah we'll no, leave, no, we'll, we'll, get we'll, we'll leave that out. <laughs> Bob ties. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, uh, you know, the, everything happens for a reason. I don't think we could look down on any club or any team, but yeah, uh, that that was my my journey, and you know, I enjoyed it. I I took whatever was in front of me and I used it. Now, other teams you played for, you played for Chipper United. Must have been an interesting experience. That was that was <laughs> that was very really interesting. That and is uh, the and golden arrows, yes, obviously. Yeah. Yes. No. 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 Come on now. Now we're going. Now Come on we're now. Going, now. Give me the getting, juice. <laughs> Give me the no, juice. Now it's getting a bit. Uh, <laughs> 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 talk, talk, talk me through that experience. No. So Amazulu was good. Yeah. Um, I then signed while I had a contract with Amazulu. Golden Arrows had approached me because they were getting a new coach, mm. Mushin Etugra. So I worked with Mushin at Ajax before. Yes. And they came, they came with great money and they were building. So they were this main city of... Golden Arrows now. Golden Arrows were, they were becoming this main city of South African football because they had, they bought uh, Robin Yanis, Mbesuma, um, Siabonga Nkosi, Clifford Ngobeni. So all these huge names are going there they come out, my agent called me and he says, hey, listen, Arrows is interested. What do you want to do? I was like, but I still have a contract with Amazulu. He's like, no, you know, let's see what we can do. I'll never forget that. I think it was second last game of the season playing for Amazulu. Um, <laughs> I had to tell the Amazulu management that I am homesick and that I have to leave. Mm. Uh, and the coach couldn't understand it. He was going crazy. What are you talking about? So, who was coaching Amazon at the time? Roger Palmgren. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, he was a bit of a crazy guy, yeah. too. And, uh, yeah, he was, he, he couldn't, be, he couldn't understand what, what I was, why I, I would leave camp. We're playing the next day. And, yeah. So, you were homesick? Yeah, well, I wasn't. I wasn't. It was you just <laughs> so that I could leave the camp and not get injured. Oh, so, okay. Golden Arrows okay, wanted me okay. to come to their preseason. That's fit. Yeah. It was very sneaky. <laughs> it was very sneaky. And yeah. yeah, Arrows offered me a great contract. I then, uh, I then thought about it for a long time. I spoke to the agent. He was like, yeah, you know, it's a good team. It's a good day building. It's a good coach. Mm. You know, the people, Sean yeah. Bartlett also came. Yeah. Um, and then it was up to me. I made the decision. I said, okay. Went to my hotel room. I told my roommate, Mark yeah. Panera. I said to him, uh, bro, listen. I'm leaving now. He's like, yeah. but are you crazy, Stika? How can you want to leave? We play tomorrow. Yeah. Blah, blah. You know, giving me this whole thing. I said, listen, I'm going to pack my bags now. I'm going downstairs and I'm going to ask the coach if I could leave. At that time, the story was homesick. Mm. I mean, come on. I've, I've been away <laughs> from home for yeah, 30, yeah. You know, since I was 13. Yeah. So what homesick? There was no homesick. I then left the camp. Obviously, Amazulu was not happy. and um, I had to terminate my contract and my contract with Golden Arrows started from the day. So, uh, so now what happens when you when you bump into Amazulu? It was it was awkward. It was you know? very awkward. Because now you said you have stick, I gotta go, and then no, you, you signed for the guys next door. <laughs> exactly. It's it's not. I mean, what kind of a story was that in the first place? <laughs> That's a shocking you know, story. You to tell a rubbish yeah. lie like that, and you know, I I at that time I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> you, you know, you are a shocking liar. No, that was crazy. I'm not a liar. It shows that I, I can't lie. You're a good man. You're a good man. Of course. Okay. And then I, you know, I felt bad. I left. <laughs> I left the camp, and two weeks later, I think the newspapers and everything else, all the other media platforms, were, you know, announcing that I've signed for, for Golden Arrows. Did you get a call? N I didn't get a call from anybody. From Mama from Mama Zulu. Zulu. No, no, I don't think they, they even wanted to see me <laughs> in Durban. Yeah. I mean, the training fields are right opposite each other also. So, I mean, they know your car when you come <laughs> in. So, you know, I did come with an Ugo or take a taxi rather. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's that's also football. And that's mm. that's things that you have to put up with. 
you know, and decisions you have to make in a split second. Mm. So very difficult uh, time, you know, that, that transition. Then I went to Golden Arrows. Sounds like you've got another story for me. Yeah, I know. Arrows is mm, no good. That's from Justin? So yeah, you must talk into the mic. I thought sorry. I was talking. Oh, <laughs> you the think he's being sexy? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, it's been. It's, it, I yeah. think it's because it's getting juicy now. I have to <laughs> really say it so it can be. Yeah, clear. we already hear. Okay. We already hear this okay. thing. Okay, okay. Uh, that thing died, eh? So you can just grab like other random ones for us, you know? If, and then at least we can put something together there. Um, okay, so now you. Golden Arrows. Golden Arrows. Okay. Lady Owner. And Machine Etugrau. Well, he's the coach. The owner is the lady. Mr. Sh- Mr. Shoutabout. No. Mushin always oh, just shouting. Oh, yeah, Mushin, yes. <laughs> Mushin, but yeah. not the club owner. Yes, we start yes. first with the club owner. Yes, 100%. Because the club owner signs and pays yeah. you. Yeah. So I went to her house. She invites me to her house and she says, I have a contract for you. Let's just get it signed. I go there. She tells me the plans. Plans good for the, for the season. And, um, yeah, I signed for Arrows. Mushin is the coach. And... Uh, Sean Ed, um, Sean Sean Edugra. <laughs> Imagine that. <but laughs> kind of suits you. <laughs> yeah, it does, suits actually. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean Bartlett then joins, and, you know, obviously that's a big influence also mm. because he's a he was a top striker. Mm. I wanted to work with him at that stage in my career. Spent the season there. Things went okay. Wasn't too bad. Then I went out on loan. Shock move. Everybody's like, what is going on? You know, uh, is it something you wanted? Mushin, well, Mushin left okay. after one season. Mushin left. I was left there. Manova came in, and um, you know, I, I wasn't really featuring in his plans. And I decided to go to a player that, a coach that I played with, also great striker, had great vision for the club, and it was Wilfred Mugay. He st- he took over at Chipper. They needed players. They needed to survive the season. It was their first season in the PSL, so it was hectic. And the money that was thrown at Chippa was ridiculous. Mm. They signed, uh, I think, uh, Benji Mwariwari from Man City. At that time, I don't know if you know him. Yeah, Benjani. Um, yeah, Benjani. Uh, OJ made a comeback that season. Brent Carlson. So now, it's a whole lot of good players mm. in a team that's not really known. And, you know, it's a shock move. Back to Cape Town. Us, yeah, Anika. <laughs> Back home. But now in different yeah, colors, so yeah. now it's weird. Yeah. Played there, had a good season as well. Um, unfortunately, the club got relegated. I was then forced to go back to Golden Arrows. They phoned me, they said, the club is no longer in the PSL. Make your way back to mm. Arrows. Yeah. Did preseason. New coach came. Back in the plans. Mm. This is the ups and downs of football. Yeah. Mark Harrison comes in and is why asking why have I, why am I, you know, I, I didn't, I wasn't interested to be honest. Mm. I wanted to leave. Mm. And he was like, no, give it a shot. You know, once again, s- train like you, like you want to play and be, you know, as fit as you can be. So when the chance comes, you'll grab it with mm. both hands. And I remember clearly training, playing. Uh, some friendlies and doing well always you always encourage me and I'm getting closer and closer to mm. to a return now yeah four arrows yeah under the new head coach everything's going smooth and crazy out of the blue a tackle a crazy crazy tackle that had that probably ended my career and that was that was uh, you can't really explain it because everything is coming together again. Mm. And then blinking of an eye, of an eye and uh, it's gone down. Sitting on the field, I remember just going in, taking a guy on. Guy coming from nowhere. Didn't I didn't see the guy coming. Because normally in a friendly, I would just jump. Mm. Even if he took the ball, it's not important. You know, it's just getting fitness, getting game done. And I didn't see the guy. And I wanted to whip the ball into the box. And as I crossed, I, I just see this guy's knee coming. 
and he gets me and he lands with his full body weight on my knee fell down same you know, knee that you had injured before. same knee different injury though so i get up and you know it feels weird then i <laughs> i always see I, I don't think anybody anybody has experienced driving a car without shocks i mm. mean that's crazy you know but i can just imagine it and that's what the first thing that came to my mind was when i stood up and i took a step forward it felt like my you know th- like my bones just touching and grinding mm. against each other i sat down and i obviously put my hand up the physio came checked my knee couldn't tell me right then there was swollen he just told me put ice and you know everything will get better yeah, well, these guys they just yeah, put but ice yeah th- that's all he could do no rushing <laughs> no to the magic hospital, spray nothing no nothing mm. nothing comes there says no don't worry so now it's a big injury i don't know it at the time i i i assume that the the physio would know the extent of that mm. I- the injury and he's he was just easy about it you know maybe because i wasn't one of the important players at that mm. time mm. i don't know anyway i i thought to myself you know i'm gonna get into my car and uh, i'll drive straight home mm. so i i get to you know I, i walk off the field the people are helping me off the field jump into my car and off i i drove think they were still training or whatever um got home this is where things got really weird mm. so i get home and um my my family's home and you know they asked what's wrong and i said i don't know my you know i heard my knee in training match but i'll see how it goes so i have a flight of stairs that i have to go up to my bedroom and you know i'm hopping on the stairs going up get to the bedroom um and my wife starts doing everything in the house she cooks she brings the food up everything is normal and it's mm. calm at home i get into bed and my son who used to sleep with us mm. he then said no he is a big he wants to be a big boy in that week he wants to sleep in his own room so we said okay he sleeps in his own room and um we go to bed that evening my knee is throbbing i uh, you know i just it's it's traumatizing because mm. you it's a it's a big adjustment for him but then for myself as well as a player i'm out again and i have ice on my knee and so we're living in in this estate in in mount edgecombe so it, it nothing could be dangerous there mm. and i'm chilling at in my bed watching tv and i hear a loud bang so like something is broken don't know if if they smash the the sliding door downstairs mm. to come in or what but there's this massive massive noise i jumped out of my bed the knee was fine the, my my i didn't even think about the knee mm. because the first thing i went i checked in his room mm. and he wasn't there i checked in the in the in the guest room and he was laying in the guest room so now he he obviously walked mm. during the night or he wanted to sleep in the other room I'm not quite sure how we got to the guest room. That I found we had checked the whole upstairs. Nothing wrong. Now I'm scared to go downstairs because what if there's robbers in the house? Mm. What if someone's broken in? So I go downstairs quickly, switch on the lights, check the door, front door, the, where it was a glass big mm. door and then the sliding doors all fine. I'm like what what could that have been because it was right here open my bathroom downstairs the bathroom door and there was a big mirror that fell down oh. and broke in the in the house then from from that when i seen that the adrenaline or whatever that was in me just left my body mm. i fell i couldn't walk that's when i knew and my wife said now we're going to the hospital that was at eight o'clock at night i i, I sat there and you know i was walking now i was you know maybe not 100% but i could walk around mm. when like i said the adrenaline left my body and i and i sat down there was no way i could stand up that's the only time i knew that this injury is you know it, it's 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 not just a sprained ligament or mm. a torn muscle no something much bigger couldn't walk then i had to get uh, my neighbor to help me get me into the car we get to the the 
hospital and adults refuse to to um, do the scans. Why? When you're not the important player, do they have to do that? But you contracted, yes, contracted to the club, trained with the club. Got well, injured I was playing never for AWOL, injured playing for the club. They claim that I had my own medical aid. Huh? So I kidding? don't know if players have their own medical. I didn't know that if you have your own medical aid, you have to take care of. But isn't it a normal thing to have medical aid? Like, of course. How can of course. <laughs> I'm puzzled. Yeah, that was the excuse that the physio gave me. He said, you have your own medical aid, use it. I was like, no, but I'm playing for the club. What the, If I get injured or anything happens to me, I'm at Golden Arrows. That is actually disgraceful. It was it was terrible. It was just terrible. I then had to do my own scans. Obviously, through the club, everything happens much quicker mm. because now you're you you kind of important. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, in in the hospital, whatever. Yeah. Right there, and then nobody knew. They don't care if you played for Man United. If you came there and Man United didn't call them, you're gonna wait like everybody else. And mm. I was in pain, and it's been a few hours mm. since I got injured. So the negligence there was, how could I not go immediately for for a scan? Mm. Go home and see how it feels. And then something like that happens in the house. You know, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I, I have no words for that. Took myself to the hospital and then MRI shows that I torn, I torn my ACL. I mean, that's huge. People go straight to hospital from an ACL injury, not go home, and then run downstairs to see if your family or everyone is okay now. So then I go to the hospital and I do my own scans. I have to find my own doctor to see who's gonna, you know, obviously I needed a, a sports doctor mm. to do my, my ACL, make the booking. I mean, there was no one there to help me with this. That's crazy. That was, I mean, Yes, it, at the in the beginning I was bitter. I was like, "Why did I sign for this club? Mm. Why would I do that?" They paid me, yes, but we also had to go to court after the contract was done. So did it? Was it really worth it? Yes, it was worth it. Because maybe not in football, but as a person, you grow, you get stronger, you meet new people, you you kind of figure out. The, the, the way that I got to play for Arrows was not the normal way that I got to play for every other club. Mm. I played for Arrows while I had a contract with Amazulu mm. and I had to do dodgy things to go and play there. Mm. And that was the end result. So it was, it, yeah, it, it was in the beginning, I, I hated the club. I hated the club. I didn't want to see the people. I took care of my own bills. Um, I did my rehab. They... I, I did my op, and then they get, uh, um, what do you call those people? Intern, mm. to do my rehab on such a huge yeah. Who's that injury. Now? Wow. This is Arrows. So they get this guy, and I'm not even sure if he, if he knows what he's doing. So after the ACL was, you know, reconstructed, they couldn't use my patella because they had fixed that while mm. I was in Ajax Amsterdam. Yeah, the first injury. The first injury. So now, there's another complication with, with my ACL because they had to use my hamstring. So they cut my hamstring and they, they, they put a new ACL in for me. Screws and whatever. Do the rehab. The guy that I was doing the rehab with, he was not qualified to take a, a sportsman of that level and, and do rehab with him rehabilitate him he was not capable of doing it and i told it, I, I said it you know on numerous occasions and it just fell on deaf ears and you know i just stuck with him and i did whatever I, because i didn't know any better as well and i started jogging one day you know it, it felt too early he said no come you know you've been through the cycling stage and mm. i still had pain go there and do the the the, the first jog and the first activity on mm. the field and I, and I, you know, I said to him, there's something not right. Let's go and check it. No, no, it will get better with time. Two weeks go by and I'm like, no, like seriously, bro, this is, yeah. it's too much pain now. It's not getting better. Let's go. 
Go for another scan. You need another op. What's wrong this time? This time there's scar tissue that built around your, your the whole injury where the screws were. Mm. The one screw was a bit loose because now you're doing stuff too early. Mm. You're picking up heavy weight with your legs. You're running too early. Everything will just start loosening itself. Mm. You know, you're stretching it too much. And then scar tissue builds up. Another up. In Durban. Club. Nowhere to be seen. They sent me the physio. But now <laughs> I'm doing um, I'm doing the up on my own expense. So I go and there's nothing else I could do. And uh, I think this is five months into a nine month period. Mm. And I then go and do my, my, my ACL again. Back. Back, uh, you know, at home, sitting, watching TV. Can't get up and run with my kid. Can't do a lot of things. It's an inconvenience to have, you know, such a huge injury. Not just for myself on the field, but mm. for my family though. And uh, time goes by again and I do the rehab. With a different person this time. So it was with two guys. It was with a guy from Amazulu and, uh, and the, guy, uh, the guy they gave me. And uh, the guy from Amazulu used to come to my house and treat me over there. And he, was, he, he said, there was, it's, it's not right because now what they've done was so now I've had the ACL, the initial op. Mm. Then I went for the scar tissue for the second op. This time, they said to me, I have to put my leg in a some kind of a splint and keep it straight so that, because once you tear your ACL, you can never get the, the full flexion of your knee. Mm. So to increase that, let's put it <laughs> in, a, in, a, <laughs> in a splint. <laughs> my God, bro, that was, that was terrible. It was, a, it was terrible because now, after the 10 days after that op, I couldn't bend my knee. Oh my gosh. So you must be joking. Am I dealing with clowns or, or what Those at this punks. stage? That's what they are. Jeez. Then the, I, I look, it was then in my mind, I, I said, look, it's, you're laying on your stomach every day. There's a guy coming and bending your knee for you. I asked him, what are you doing? You know, wh why, can, how can it be so sore? You, he says, no, we have to break now. We have to break through the uh, scar tissue. Yes. So anybody that had scar tissue in the, in the knees, if you're going and breaking that, I don't think uh, they do it with, without uh, anesthetic oh. because it is way too painful. So we start going on to different machines, um, different injections into my knee to try and get this whole scar tissue away. And it doesn't work. It didn't work. It was dealing with people that did not know what they were doing. And that hampered me for another year. So now it's three years lost on injury. Mm. And then I had to still come back to Rosebank in Joburg and see a proper doctor that did proper rehabilitation for me with my fourth op. Uh, fourth op. So four operations later. And nine months of recovery after the fourth up was I able to to um, get onto the field again so the journey that I've been on yeah. the injury the neglect from clubs the incompetence of, of, of physios around there it's scary it's really scary because I think that I could have still been playing today if I had the right treatment and maybe the right people that was there in the beginning that stayed there mm. and did not disappear once things started to look a bit dodge. So yeah, I then after that fourth up, uh, up I came to Joburg. I trained with, with Wits, with Gavin Hunt, just to get fit test the knee and I'm 100% um, talks of signing interesting back after four years um, I, I think if you know you know Gavin yourself mm. he's, he's very straightforward mm. he'd tell you from the day one listen must be so <laughs> you know you 
you were good, but you, you're not so good now. Mm. We don't need you. He actually encouraged me. It was one of the best coaches to go back and train with because mm. he's very honest and he'd tell me, you're not good enough, you won't make it stop. He encouraged, he said, you have a chance. You know, after four years, you you lose fitness. Mentally, you, you, you're not as sharp as you were. And the game goes on. Game progresses, yeah. Yeah, of course. It, it's, it is different players, different system. But the game is based on speed now. So now you find yourself in, in a place that is un, you're unfamiliar with. And Gavin gave me the, the full preseason. Once again, luck comes into play. They see Gama. He's a player from Malachli, um, national player. And then there was me coming back from injury. Who are you going to sign? Mm. So, again, yes, talent, the hard work, the dedication is there. But there's that element of luck that you need in football. And once that happens for you, you you know, there, there's nothing else that can stop it. Once you, you get that lucky break, for me, a lot of players in South Africa that is still playing today, will never taste European football. Mm. In that way, I'm lucky. I've been there. Mm. I've played there. I lived and there. And a lot of top players, you know. Exactly. You rub shoulders with world greats now. So, um, yeah, I went to Tux and I trained with Tux. And then there was the the um, fitness issue and getting back into the game. And, you know, I, 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 I during this time, I was busy starting my own football academy. Mm. I was looking at, you know, my son, looking at different players, his friends, and put them together. I was like, you know, they do all the difficult things because that's what you see on TV. Mm. You won't see a guy say, wow, that was a nice first touch mm. because it's basic. Mm. So you want to do the difficult things first. And I thought, no, no, already let me tap into their minds and get the simplicity first simple total football then we move on to your ronaldo skills and messi mm. skills but so while i was doing all of that it kind of pushed me away from playing um and and looking more into into youth football i have not officially retired i i have just stopped training myself as a football player and now I, I obviously I you you would never just leave the game. So play indoor football with, with Stiga Fredericks and Matthew Booth. And then I, I play for the Nike Center. Nike looks after me till today. So um I play for the, the, the Nike Legends. And you know, you get some guys that wanna get fit there and mm. so yeah, in in terms of me playing again. It will take a miracle to get back onto the field um, because life moves on. And if I didn't have kids and a wife and other responsibilities, maybe I could have been, you know, go back to, to my youth days where football was everything. Mm. Train in the morning, train in the evening, mm. get fit in six months and get a contract. Then you have to wait. You know, you don't know what club is looking for a certain player. So it was a whole long thing, and in w during this whole time, this f the course of the four years, I opened up a business, several businesses. You know, Fiso, mm. you've been there to mm. Durban, you've been to a few places that I opened. So, um, yeah, that you know, I mean, uh, building on that, on that specific point, I mean, a lot of guys play football at the highest level for a long time. Within a short space of time, it's everything's gone. You know, I mean, what have you done differently? I mean, from a young age, obviously, I know you got advice from Rob Moore in terms of investing and things like that. Talk me through that and, and how you've managed yourself to be able to live beyond football. Yeah, look, it's it's not easy. It's not easy because you're not going to earn 200k every month from doing Is that how much you something. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just checking, no. man. Yeah, people want to know. Could be more, could be, <laughs> I, I can tell you, I can tell you. But yeah, you an are, are average you salary of of a hundred thousand and more 
for players today is more than enough. If you know how to use it wisely, I must admit, and I will not lie, I have spent and lost so much money because I did not listen. Mm. And yes, I, I live beyond football. I, I could have been much further, you know, or should I say wealthier than what I am today. But you learn from it. And I think the guys that stop football and have nothing after football, they, they didn't have a plan. And I don't know what I would have done because if I was still playing, would I have been able to focus on a business? Mm. Would, I have been able, would I have been able to, to focus on, on youth football? I don't think so. At the same time, you're making enough money to, to buy properties and, and start businesses. They don't always uh, work out. But, you know, I, I can't say because that was not my part. And I think that as a form of a professional football, and this is just for, this is just my opinion, mm. stay in the game. Stay in the game and give back. Because you don't know what association might form for former pros to actually work together and start mm. an academy, for instance, in mm. your, you know, your province that you come from mm. or in another province, wherever it is. And a lot of our guys just drift away because, I don't know, you it, it's hard to leave the game. Mm. It is it is hard. So it's like breaking up with your ex-girlfriend, Fiso. Uh, and then you, and then you, why, you don't want to see her again. Why, why, why you, why because you, you <laughs> look like you had a lot of ex-girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna we're not gonna go down this yeah, path. Charm a boy like you, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You must respect me. Yeah? This is my <laughs> people. Yeah? I know. Yeah? Let's get rid of this guy, uh, McCarran from Puzzle <laughs> Media. We don't want him here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, I mean, I want to go back a bit. You speak of obviously, um, guys didn't have a plan. When did you? start having a plan or when did you first make your first investment or your first business you know talk me through that look i was i was blessed to to earn a lot of money at a young age so you could go and buy a house and i bought a house in cape town um i paid the house off and i invested in in the ho our family house in johannesburg mm. um then my dad, he's been in, 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 in business for years, but he used to work for somebody. Mm. And he said to me, which again, I was stubborn, I didn't want to listen. Mm. I should invest in this particular business that we, that we run today. And I was like, no, you know, it doesn't really interest me. The only thing that interested me was football, football. restaurants. You know, if I had to invest in something, mm. I would love to own a McDonald's or a KFC very difficult at the time and he was like you know sometimes you don't ha you won't just the lucky few in the world will do what they love for money and some of us he used his, uh, himself as an example will work and still make a good living by doing what we have to mm. and I then said yeah you know uh, I, I bought a vehicle and invested some money into the business and 2013 we started uh triple s supplies which is a automotive engineering um, company so we just supply all engineers all over south africa well the customers that we have and so we started with him then in durban like i said i like this nice restaurants and stuff mm. Um, I opened a business with a friend of mine, uh, a Russian guy. We opened a salon and a spa, which which was good at the time. And then the guy turned out he didn't have a work permit. Oh shucks! So who are these people you deal with? <laughs> <laughs> Chance takers, man. <laughs> so that's Should I know, be worried you about you as a friend? No, 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 not me, my friend. I'm yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. I have a South African passport. Okay, I'm going nowhere. I'm just checking it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were there. Yeah, you came yeah. to the... Beautiful place. It was a beautiful spa. place there. Yeah, in it was side. a restaurant. Yeah, it was very nice, yeah. So, yeah, that was the, the beginning of, of, of me going into business. 
was starting with my dad and then going out and and doing some other things uh, like opening a spa and a, uh, a restaurant it lasted f for quite a long time and then there was obviously you know the law that comes into place mm -hmm. and checking paperwork and things yeah. didn't look so good and we decided to sell yeah, yeah. we sold from there went into another line of business which was transport mm. um, it's not easy because you need to know somebody at yeah, in the yeah. in the game you're not gonna just walk in and buy a, a taxi route and buy taxis and put yeah. them on you know you'll get killed my friend <laughs> this is in Zanzi. This is South Africa. Yeah. This is South Africa. Straight they talk. Don't you, die hard for nothing, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you must be a diehard. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, football for, you know, w when you make a name, it's easy to negotiate. It's mm. easy to get mm. things out of people, although you still have to work and pay for it. Um, it made it easier for me to to invest in, in taxes, something that I knew nothing about. Mm met some people and you know the same people so that's good it's good to know that don't implicate me yet i know <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day in Durban you need to take a taxi i'll, I'll arrange it for you <laughs> no 100 percent, my friend but i mean your, your story is an incredible one and i think a lot of people can can take can, can take the lessons from it um you know the setbacks and to, to see you still smiling today um you know it's it's it's, it's great for me personally yeah, um, but I cry every night. Yeah, it's because you're, it's cause you're <laughs> a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you, I told you, I told you, your wife is the one who cracks the whip. <laughs> now you're oh making no. me look bad because I was trying to defend you. <laughs> 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 Come on, Dix. Uh, it huh? shows that you really don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love you, my uh, friend. Huh? No, man. A, I've got a confession to make. I've got a confession to make. Yeah. You know, before we became friends, like, yes. I was like, hey, man, that's my player, man. You know, and I was obsessed with like football manager from like a young age when no one even knew football manager, you know. So I, I remember I had the 98 version, I had 2002. Then eventually I get to, a, I think it was, was it the 2011, uh, 2011 version? So now I'm, I'm managing Tottenham, you know. <laughs> I'm winning things there. Arr, arr, see, then the news comes out there and I stand to this, put on a transfer by Ajax Amsterdam. I'm like, I'm signing him. <laughs> Yo, I signed him. The fans protested that I could not know this player. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, this guy's starting in this team. Why didn't you manage me in real life, son? I managed you, boy. And ah, you're scoring goals for me there. Lots of tap-ins, but it's fine. Yeah. You know, I had Bale running there, it giving you. Ah, I was like. Hey. I was on the field with Bale. Ah, you were there, My boy. goodness. You were there. You know? So, I mean, I was like, ah, I know. That's, I mean, and then uh, coincidentally, you know, a few years later, we became friends and. You know, and I've always been a big believer in you. And I had hoped that one day, I mean, I spoke to you about it in, in terms of it would be great to see you back on the field again because I, I saw the quality firsthand um, from a young age. And, um, you know, uh, you know, life works in its, its, its own way. But uh, the great thing is that we find happiness, we find peace because a lot of people, careers end or injuries, ha injuries hamper them and they sit there and they bitter at the world, you know. Yeah. And it's great to see someone with a with a positive outlook. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, if it ended when you wanted it to end, it it's even better. Mm. You know, it's sweeter that way. But if it's f like forced to end, mm. you can't blame someone for being bitter or being, you know, confused. Then again, you need the support. I told you right at the beginning of your show, you need the support through the good times and the bad times. It sounds like a song. Oh, huh? good, good times. times. <laughs> yeah. bad. Do you know the song? Yes, of course. I'll be by <laughs> your side. Oh, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. Actually, you know, it's... it's uh, Didn't I meet you in a club also one night? No. Was it a in club? Durban. Yeah, I think I was doing a transfer yeah, to somebody. Why? No. To Tits. This is a, this is a, this is a platform. This uh, yeah. People can't be knowing my private life. No, no, no. They must know. We were at that they place there in Durban. On yeah, let's not only see this. We, we, we have a life, you know. Actually, we have to live life. No, 100%. 100%. So. I'm a rock star, bro. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I see your Insta. Ah, don't start. Don't start. You're the guy that starts the parties. One night with Maz. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. 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 No, not like that. No, 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 no. Come on, keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. 
but I mean, roommates on on Florida Road. And if you, if for those of you listening who don't know Florida Road, very infamous, infamous, very fun place. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he started being a bad influence on me back then, and uh, he's moved on now. And I mean, uh, he's actually got a flyer here, June Holiday Clinics, the Football Factory. Yeah. Tell me about this, my friend. Yeah. No. 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 This was. Is this, the academy? this was. Yes. This started. Um, once I stopped. So when I kind of took a break, I used to go down to the field with with my son and I just started playing with him you know teaching him how to kick a ball how to pass a ball how to you know use a ball in the right way and he used to call his friends and now the friends came mm. and you know but in no time I was I was coaching five six kids and I was like wow they actually listen it's nice mm. you know and you can see the development you can see in a month's time, the guy that couldn't kick a ball what is now a kicking a ball. It makes, yeah. yeah. I then thought about it. I put a plan together, and um, only once I moved to Joburg did I actually register mm. the football factory. I got my brother on board to help me, um, and then uh, I did coaching licenses. Obviously, mm. I think it's important to do. Uh, I'm busy. Well, I'm shortlisted for the UEFA license now, so. It's a great big stuff, eh? Yeah, yeah, big, big stuff. Only, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> we try to push ourselves yeah. to the to the top, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we we've grown. I have I have uh, I think like between forty and fifty kids. Wow, that's a lot, eh? And uh, we have our own facility. It's a family-owned school. Uh, it's called Eagle House in Reimsek. It's a private school. Mm. Facilities is there for me to utilize and uh, Nike came on board and gave us some balls and some other sponsors. So it's looking good. It's looking good. We li- we have some good talent there. Mm. And uh, we, we only look to, to grow. And you know how it is once you get one player. Mm. Mm, let me ask you this question quickly. Um, is Penny McCarthy in mm. South Africa, who did he play for? He played for <laughs> silver, not uh, seven stars. Yes, he played for seven Before stars. Before they became or they merged and became Cape Town. Yeah, it took one player, Penny McCarthy. So my goal is one player from the football factory to go to Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, w- anywhere, Tottenham, and form uh, Tottenham, South Africa. That is my goal yeah. with one player. So. In if, if if there's any talented boys out there that that believes in themselves and and believes that we can take them to a, another level, uh, the football factory is open. It's yeah. open, boys. And it's going to be open on the 24th until the 28th of June, June at Holiday Clinics. So uh, obviously Eagle House School. That's where it is, 73 Lawrence Road, in Putview, Johannesburg. So uh, yeah. Five days, it's going to be fantastic. I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look, uh, we, last year we had uh, CNA on board. Unfortunately, I was using uh, um, the club facilities where my son played at. uh, And we didn't have like classrooms and, Mm. you know, all of that. And CNA was still on board and gave all the educational things Mm. that we need because football is not just about football. It's not only about kicking a ball and you have... You, there's so many other values in life that you learn um, and and we give them books, pens and every day we will jot down what we've learned for the day and get some inspirational speakers like uh, uh, George Maluleka is one of them that's attending this year and a tour of the Nike Center in Soweto so we very excited for, uh, for no, this. No, a lot of moms will be keen to get the kids out of out of the house, like get out, you know, go to your thing, yeah, and, and, no, and, no. and get some training. No, the moms must bring the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, and the exciting thing is that I mean, like we s- we spoke about beyond football, um, this is also something that you can have pride in. In terms of, you spoke about giving back. This is a perfect example of staying in the game, giving back, and and having a passion for something that you do beyond making money yeah of course look it's it's something that i've done my whole life if you think about it started when i was seven so i've been doing this my whole life 
I know this in and out. Why not teach 50 kids and if two of them take it and use mm -hmm. it and they make it, it's a life changed and a dream realized. So there is, it, it doesn't matter where you come from, how you look, what color you are, how tall, short, we can all be something. And I think in football, that's where I can help someone become something. And my goal is to, like I said, is to get as many players to Europe as possible. Last year we were in Real Madrid. My son went to Madrid and he did, he trained there, he played well. He then went to Ajax Amsterdam and did well there as well. He's still too young to sign a contract mm. there, but the experience mm. and the exposure they get, you know, you, you, that's something you, you can't buy. Mm. You can't buy. You have to love it. You have to do it. Be there and see that these kids in Europe, in they have the same opportunity like our boys here in Africa. Mm. A lot of people think that, you know, we come from a Cassie or a gangster area, you know, gangster ridden areas and stuff. That That's the way to go. It's mm. not. It's not. If you don't make it in football, you have many other um, things to fall back on. But, like I said again, football is not only kicking a ball. It's a it's teaching you discipline, mm. responsibility, um, respect. So, I think it, it goes hand in hand with, with education, if you ask me. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. Well, I've been engaging with a lot of people on social media with regards to obviously this particular a chat with you and you know people sent in a number of questions that they had for you so i don't know if you if you mind or we actually not don't have a choice all. you don't have a choice <laughs> i know i'm asking you no, no. <laughs> yeah. right depends uh, on the question if you say you're gonna answer it man okay all right so i'll call your wife to whip you <laughs> 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 all right so victor Tulu from uh, durban um he asked what's your opinion on former clubs has a chiefs and ask <laughs> at the moment <laughs> <laughs> Why those clubs? <laughs> hey man, why, why are you asking me? Why? Uh, should we call the guy? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we must give him a call. <laughs> Look, it, football changes, and it, you can ask the same thing about United, Man United. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've played for the two clubs. The one club is in the NFD, where they should never be, mm -hmm. as as I escape car. The other is Chiefs that ended ninth. I think that's the first time in their history they've ended ninth. I think in 10 years, the game changes. Every 10 years, you'll see a change in the game, a change in players. Mm -hmm. And during those 10 years, it could either go bad or it could go good. And for Chiefs and Ajax, unfortunately, they, they're not where they want to be. It's two great clubs. I think their philosophies are the same. Change of coaching staff um, that that might have, you know, not been the, the right choices for the specific clubs. At the end of the day, I think those clubs should be in the PSL at least in the top five with the right head coaches and the right management behind those head coaches. Okay, another one. Why do strikers not score in the PSL? Is it outstanding defending or poor tactical awareness or what is it? Why can't these guys score? Yo, I work on that every day. <laughs> yeah. Before my session ends with my kids, we do shooting. Like I said, once again, if we go back to the beginning, the basics. No first touch, you can't shoot. Knowing when and what part of your foot to use in a certain area on the field, if you're outside the box, you're going to shoot. You're going to use your laces, your instep. But if you're in the box, there's no need to shoot and kill a keeper. And I think this is grassroots level. This is where we need to get it right so that our strikers in the PSL do score goals. 
that they they know what to do when they're in the box you cannot put someone in the box and expect them and and cross a ball to them and say score mm. you have to train it and when you to answer that question directly you only as good as you are trained so if the striker is trained to score goals believe me the striker will score goals spoken Simple. like a true forward i think you're just defending Simple. these guys no i'm not defending these <laughs> punks <laughs> all right we're going to move on to menzi ngobo he asked and i think it's already been answered i mean but i'll let you answer it at 31 is your football career over right now this moment my career is finished it's over if i win the lotto tomorrow when is the lotto tonight, <laughs> tonight it's friday tonight or tomorrow no idea, I've never played the you see if you don't play you won't you won't win so Sounds like if Bavaria. i if, basically if i did not have to do everything else that i'm doing right now and focus only on training i believe that you can th- that I'll, I can make a comeback at 32 years old at 32 play for a professional team which is NFD or in the PSL if i don't achieve that uh, yes, uh, so if you don't win the lotto if i yes <laughs> if i if i if i do win the lotto i'll do that all right but so we have responsibilities and we have bills to pay so it's kind of a 50-50 if i'll ever come back i i, I never say so I, and and also to to the guy that asked the question i will never say i'm done until i'm 100% sure that i'm done with my career 100% okay we hear you and then luko rodaku uh, he asked what's the toughest part of being a young professional footballer in south africa when 10 years ago or now general, because you can now sp- you can speak about 10 years ago and you can speak about because years. it's it's mention different. them both mention them both in the big like 10 years ago i think it would been it, it it's much easier with all the pressure um because you did not have all the social media platforms you didn't have all the distractions mm-hmm. you didn't have as much money mm-hmm. as you can earn today so staying focused was easy with the right friends and obviously just knowing what you want to achieve so that goal that you put out you cannot just have a goal i want to play in the first team what happens after you made the first team then what okay you've achieved your goal mm. and i'm talking from experience because my goal was to get to ix i got to ix then what i didn't say i want to be eredivisie player of the year i want to maybe move to england it wasn't in my mind the only thing that i had in my mind was i'm going to sign for ajax amsterdam mm. i did and then what you know the plan only came once i was coming to an end with ajax amsterdam mm. so i think you know with with staying motivated and and staying you know on the right track is the right friends and having a proper goal in place today 10 years after uh, <laughs> you know not ten years but you know after yeah, my yeah. my debut um we fast forward and now the pressure of social media much more difficult to 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 concentrate because everything you're going to take out your phone mm. you're going to record yourself at training mm. in the change room you're not focusing on your game anymore you're focusing on taking a video of your new boots that Nike has sent you You know, it's all those small elements that play a big part at the later stage. Mm. So it's hard staying on track, I know that, but it's possible with the right people and right advice and be open-minded. I'm taking that advice. Some advice you receive will be total crap. Others will be, you know, uh career saving. Okay, 100%. Um I wonder if I can just steal one of the phones. Okay, I've got something for you here that uh Okay. 
I'm sure you'll recognize these voices, um, but they wanted to send a message to you, and uh, yeah, okay, just have a listen. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Um, Fiso, how's your brother? How you doing? Um, Stiga, are you my gazi? What's happening? It's a real pity. It's a real pity. I wish I was there with you guys right now, but uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, for, from my side, um, yeah, I've known I've known this guy for a very long time, actually, from Bay Hill days, and uh, obviously our time at IX. So. There's a lot, there's a lot I can say about this man, but uh, it was just an honor to, to have him, you know, right next to me. And he's one of the guys that uh, actually he took, that took me under his wing when we, when we were there in Cape Town. He taught me a lot. And uh, it, was, it was great, man. So I just want to say you're such a great guy, my man. And uh, yeah, I think God uh, brought us together for a reason. And, uh, you know, all the funny moments that we've, we've had in our lives, you know, I'll, I'll always cherish that forever. Let me not get emotional, but uh, my man, you're the best of the best. Mr. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> Thanks, Gazi. <laughs> George Maluleka. Does that voice sound familiar? Georgie. <laughs> Georgie. Yeah. I know no, they knew was there Zlatan. <laughs> the South African Zlatan, they knew. <laughs> they knew. Special friend of yours. I know. So... Uh, this guy, his talent is unbelievable. Mm. And uh, I'd have loved to see him play in, in Europe. But what a great guy. What a great player. And he's at a big club in South Africa. So I'm happy. I'm happy that I could add value to him while he was at IX Cape Town. So thank you, Georgie Stu. <laughs> Me do. But another one. No, one man. More. One Stop more. it. One more. Uh... Uh, he kind of says his name at the beginning, so I don't need to introduce him. Hey, top striker. This is Jimmy Tao. <laughs> um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to appreciate you, to honor you, and also just to share the experience that I had with you as a teammate. Um, I really enjoyed playing with you. Um, you really inspired me a lot, and I want to wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And um, I think you've got a responsibility to make sure that your kids take after you, the emulate what you've done. I know injuries cut your career short, my brother, but it is what it is. Now you've got a bigger role to play in your boys' lives and make sure that they get to reach the levels that you've reached or even greater. Stiga, it's been an honor and a privilege for me to play with you, my brother. I want to wish you all the best. Have a good one, my brother. Jimmy Chow. Sharp, ten, ten. Oh, Stiga. Jimbo. You can't Skipper. El Hefe. Skipper. Skipper. Yeah. Fantastic guy. Hmm. Used to wear balaclava when he used to come to, to, to <laughs> well, the I games. Do I, I don't keep, know. Keep the, the complexion going. Yeah, I know. You know him. You know him. Yeah. Super stylish. Mm. Super successful. What a guy. I mean, what does it, how does it feel for you to, to hear from your ex-teammates, your, your friends? Well, obviously, I've done something right, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's big players. Jimmy Tao, George Maluleka, I mean, that's huge, huge guys. So to be, you know, mentioned amongst them and, and, and friends with them till today, it says something. And the, the advice that they give, it's, you know, it's, uh, I think true friends will give you that advice. Others would have asked, ah, brah, come man, phone me, I want to go party. Mm. Look after your kids. Look after, you know, give, give them a good life and teach them, like Jimmy was saying, what, whatever I've learned over the years. Just give back. Give back. And I'm sure they also doing, well, I know that both of them, they're doing well. So we all neighbors. We stay in the same area. It's a problem. But it's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. I see it. there, yeah? Yeah, it's a soccer village. <laughs> so it's okay. You see each other now and then. But I mean, life goes on. Old JFA is a huge, a huge businessman and um, still involved in super sport, which is, you know, something that, that always plays in my mind. 
do I ever want to do something like that? Mm. The latest stage in my life, I'll, I'll decide. And George, that's still playing. So it's a former and a current having their, their, their views and, you know, their experiences with me. It means a lot. Uh, you know, thank you. I'm sure there's a lot of other guys that there's some good things and then there's mm. a lot of other guys that have bad things to say. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> That's uh, football. Yeah, if I you don't have people that don't like you, then you've mm. done something mm. uh, wrong. Mm. I tried to get Tulani, but unfortunately the Tulani Serero, but unfortunately the, the Wi-Fi in Dubai is bad. Mafana Mafana obviously getting ready for the Africa Cup of Nations out there. Um, yeah. Quick one before, before we actually go. I mean, Mafana Mafana obviously... I've got a tough group, Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, and Namibia. Um, what do you, how do you fancy their chances going to Africa Cup of Nations? Look, it's, they have a, a, a huge chance of, of progressing through the group. It's not easy. When we look at the quality of players that we have, they are unbelievable. It's a bunch of young players mixed with some experienced players. Um, I think if each and every one of them deserve to be there. And, you know, just... I think a lot of the time we focus on the other teams in our group, whether they're weak or strong. Mm. We should just believe in ourselves. Look at each player, each, in, each uh, individual, and know that you playing in Vitesse for a reason. You're playing in France for a reason. And I think... We give a lot of respect to other countries, um, especially when we think they're a bit stronger than mm. us. We we shouldn't be doing that. You know, we have the talent. We have the crop of players right now. And kind of have form. So there's nothing stopping us from, from at least progressing and going... Uh, through to the last 16. Okay. Interesting. I don't want to uh, keep this. And uh, if we don't progress, then I'm coming for you. Eh? No, you can come. It's my <laughs> opinion. It's, it's just <laughs> my opinion. But it's the one opinion. thing, the first thing you touched on, the moment we sat down, we got in here, you're like, geez, they did Banyana dirty. You know, it's been unfortunate <laughs> because Banyana, Banyana, I mean, the growth that they've had wow. has been Phenomenal. out of this world. Felt that they had a chance against Spain in that opener. China, one of the really top nations uh, in the world, you know. Professional league, yes. um, it makes a massive difference. And look, our team is how they own. I think we can be really proud of them. No, of course, of course. From where we come from, I think Banyana has done us sure, extremely proud. Um, it's their first World Cup. Um, a lot of young players, a lot of players that has just started professional football. We even have our captain that owns a football club, mm. and. Uh, the 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 centre back that plays with her at, also plays with her at the club. Mm. So I mean, it just shows that something is going right, and I hope that they are going to focus on on our our girls because we have at the football factory also we have um, we encourage boys and girls. A lot of the clubs always obviously it's a mm. professional league, so yeah. you use boys. Let me tell you. You'll be surprised by the amount of girls that want to play football and that can play football. So, Banana has done us proud, and I and I hope that um, the girls at home, the young girls, are watching because you have uh, some of our players now playing abroad, mm. which is amazing. And again, competing in the World Cup with Spain, China, with their professional leagues for women it's amazing you know we we've like held our own and unfortunate with last night's result but that's football it's football experience you first get the experience um, and then everything else will, will follow well he speaks of experience one of the great things is um, one of the really great things hmm what did we pass me? Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Our producers are Stanton. Yes. Our producers want to know, and they want the people to know. Where can people follow you on Twitter? Yeah. Instagram, um, Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. 
So Facebook is just Stanton Lewis. Um, that I think I think that's my. No, no, fun, no funny names. No, 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 no funny names. <laughs> Instagram. On Instagram, it's Stanton Lewis seventeen. That's my lucky number. So. It's a good number, that. Yeah, and then Twitter is Stanton Lewis seventeen as well. I think you guessed. No. Okay. I'm not. That's fine. <laughs> you'll, follow, you'll find me. You'll type it in. You'll find me. One hundred percent. And uh, well, in terms of my social media, you can catch me at Mazi 007 on Twitter. What? Okay, I didn't know. I, I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah, you must learn. I'm learning. Come on, man. The at then. At ma- okay. Yes. At Mazi 007. Hola. The secret agent. <laughs> yes. I got you. <laughs> on Instagram at Fismas 007 and on Facebook Fiso Mazi Bobo. And uh, don't forget that you can find the Fismas show on uh, these different platforms: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and the Podzilla Media YouTube page. So obviously, it's a wrap for episode one. You spoke about experience. What an experience it has been to. Since with you, I mean, you're a friend of mine. I, I know a lot of the things I was asking you about, and it was a case of informing our listeners. Um, but there's things I found out today that I that I that I sit here as a friend, and, I, and I'm beaming with pride to 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 know you. And um, yeah, I also wish you nothing but the best going forward. And um, fucking it, I'm a stranger, man. Come on, man. Yeah, well, you have your own show now, so congrats on that. That's a that's that's really great, and it's an honor for me to be here as well first guest i don't know if you know if anybody else couldn't make it that's why you chose me but Maybe. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm here anyway i support that's a real friend yeah. you know what i mean it's yeah. a real friend so yeah i, I had to i had to know. ask you like 50 times are you sure and i'm like yeah this guy yeah uh, are you sure yeah I'm you like, know sometimes yeah. i can just this uh, morning i'm like are you coming <laughs> <laughs> just confirmation no, I mean, but i know. really appreciate my friend and uh Yeah, no, well done to you and the guys. Mm. You know, putting this together is amazing. Yeah, but that guy Justin doesn't count. Justin counts. No, Everybody Justin counts. Count. Everybody counts. Don't be like arrows. Ah, oh, <laughs> wow. And <laughs> it's a wrap. That was a fist match show. I'm going to shade to wrap things up. But yeah, Stanton Lewis, the first guest on our full episode of the fist match show, and it's been a really special one. Um, time has flown. Two hours. You are joking. Wow, my kids. Time flies. Time flies. Schools <laughs> forgotten about his kids. <laughs> schools have closed. <laughs> so I think we should close the show now and let Stanton Lewis run. Thank you once again. Thank and you guys. Uh, see you guys again soon. Cheers. <laughs>